Hello and welcome to another out of spec motoring road trip video guys things are going crazy in the electric car world right now automakers are switching to the North American charging standard to gain access to the Tesla supercharger network to have a more reliable consistent and dependable charging experience and what I want to show in this video is what that actually means we're going to talk a lot about using the supercharger network on road trips and if you're at an automaker if you're at a hardware provider use this video as a way to gauge a real world road trip using the best charging network in the world so we have back on the channel very exciting our 2019 tesla model 3 performance i'll take you on a tour of the car tell you what we've changed with it because a lot has changed since the last video and um we're gonna go from here in fort collins colorado all the way 2,000 miles to florida using only the supercharger network and um i'm gonna show you the real world road trip let's see what happens <laughs> And a good morning to you here at the Candlewood Suites. We, um, it was actually up early. I was just working, got some videos out. Alyssa slept in. And so now she's ready to go. We got the car uh, preconditioned. Uh, we charged it to 90%. When I woke up this morning, I didn't realize that I would have so much work to do. It would take a couple hours to get out of the hotel. So um, I bumped it to 95. So it's at 95%. We preconditioned it about 10 minutes ago using shore power to charge the battery, which is great. Um, and I should say shore power to run the AC compressor and everything. So cabin should be cool. We've gotten great free electricity, a nice stay, very reasonably priced actually. I've noticed a huge uptick in hotel prices. You guys know I'm always traveling on the road and I would say it almost doubled in the last year would be my impression uh, just on the road. But this was actually very reasonable. I think $150, something like that uh, with charging right off the highway. Nice clean rooms, can't beat that. So uh, let's unplug and head out. We're gonna head towards St. Louis and beyond today. Should be a nice drive. Now we're kind of getting back into the territory where this car has spent a lot of time. And uh, we'll just wrap that up nicely there. And there's also a little holster that you can put in, boom, right here. So love that. All good. Let's uh, take a look at the nav this morning, see what it's saying to get to Florida. 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 95% state of charge, 267 miles. Man, this thing has had some degradation. It is definitely noticeable from when we first got the car. I'd say it's on par with like a Model 3 standard range but now. What would you say is, well, yeah, it's noticeable within the car, but for us, it's not noticeable at all because of all the different Well, races. if you just come back <laughs> from towing with a Rivian, this feels like a freaking race and car on a e road trip. Well. Yeah, the e-tron's not the best road tripper, but the Model S smokes this thing. So Webster, Florida, 1,000 miles pretty much on the nose is where we're heading to. We're what's gonna be in Webster? Webster? Yeah, what's in Webster? Isn't that where we're going? Yeah. Oh, okay. Um, so let's see what we can find here. That'll be a surprise for the audience. That's what I was Not in this video, though. No. That'll be for a different one. Okay, let's go here. It wants to go to Columbia, Missouri, St. Louis, Marion, Cudowa, Nashville. We've done this, this drive a bunch. Let's see what we're looking like. Is there anything east... So we are here, we're gonna skip over. Wow, this thing is really cranking the AC right now. There we go. We're gonna skip over Concordia, Missouri. Haven't been to that one before. Columbia, Missouri, West, and then East. I remember these two stations. And it wants us to go to, which one? It wants us to go to the 150 kilowatt charger. We don't wanna do that. No, the other one's a 250. Yeah. Yeah, this one is 250 kilowatts, mm. a little bit earlier, but still we have plenty of range. So I understand why it would want to go to a 150, because even if we get to um, that station at Columbia, we would only be able to get roughly 150 kilowatts. So it's actually not that much of a, a downside you going to that. that no, okay. I think it's just sheer luck. And then St. Louis is 222 miles, which we just can't do in this car. I mean, it sounds crazy to think that a Model 3 performance can't do 222 miles at highway speeds, but... This is... this Model 3 This car has no aero shielding left underneath it. <laughs> it's definitely got some resistance in the pack and some degradation. So, 
um, but it's still holding on great. Dries freaking perfectly. So it looks like we're heading off to that 150 kilowatt one in Columbia, which we've been to before. This car has been to a few times. So let's head off there and uh, we'll see you in 115 miles. We'll just try and keep the speed up as much as possible, burn any extra juice and be a great way to start the day. Shut him off at autopilot. We have arrived to the Columbia, Missouri Charger. You and us have been here many times before. There's a Jimmy John's right across the street that we typically hit when we're here, right over there. And um, let's get this thing juicing up. Again, a version two Charger at this one. There is a version three just down the road, but uh, it actually wouldn't really help us much because again, the car only can accept full power when it's dead. Uh, and with the charging curve, we're not really giving up much time here with the version two because we're at such high state of charge. A little bit windy, rain starting to kick in. The wipers were the most annoying thing on this trip. Yeah, that was funny. It was, when it was dry, the wipers were just going like crazy. And then when it started to rain, they stopped. Yeah, and um, somebody said it might be because the excess amount of bugs, so how do you get the bugs off if they're, yeah. Yeah, just I mean, bugs. just, just put a hard. rain sensor in your car's Tesla. This was a dumb decision to use Tesla Vision. Anyway, we're, we're right up to getting max speed. I imagine our pack is relatively cool. It did a tiny bit of preconditioning, actually, on the way over here, which we didn't really need. But I figured, okay, whatever, I'm not going to go out of my way and shut off preconditioning by selecting another location nearby. Let's see what our battery pack temps are at. First charging session of the day. Again, it cooled off last night. Service mode's loading up, getting 146 kilowatts. We love to see that. Let's come on, baby, let's go. Thank you. High voltage, charging. We're doing 400 amps to that cable, 55 C. Oh, it's warmer than I thought. So maybe it did just precondition it pretty quickly then. Anyway, all is good. I think we're only gonna be here for a few minutes, Alyssa. Mm -hmm. Let's take a look at our trip plan. It wants to go to St. Louis, Missouri. It says we need 16 more percent. And I would say that makes sense to hit this charger. So this one, 250 kilowatts, Brentwood. This one, 250 kilowatts. Yeah, and it seems to be much less busy. Yeah, this one's only three stalls available. This one has nine stalls available. So this seems to be the, uh, the better charger. Not sure we've been to either of these. St. Louis has a lot more chargers than I remember. And then we're going to take 64 over to Mount Vernon and down. So uh, this stretch is always a big stretch, the Mount Vernon to St. Louis. Or is it, is that the stretch that's a pain in the ass? Anyway, there's one somewhere out here. I'm not sure how many miles that is, but let's see. St. Louis, no, actually it shouldn't be that big of a deal. So I'm confusing everyone now because I'm all confused. All right, so we're going to charge up for... I don't know, 10 minutes, 15 minutes at most, and then we'll hit the road. How does that sound? You can see we're actually sustaining pretty good power here at 60 kilowatts, and that's because we have not heat soaked the battery pack. So that has worked out very nicely. 
Um, the car wants another 10 minutes of charging here. We probably won't give it that long, although our efficiency, especially with the rain, 333 watt hour per mile, it's just not incredible. And what's funny is my Model S is actually more efficient than this car. And a lot of that has to do with the under panels being gone and just, you know, resistance built up and the older drivetrain and stuff like that. So um, anyway, I think maybe, yeah, another, another few minutes we'll stay here and then we are off to St. Louis should be a great drive. Okay, well, Trip Planner is predicting a 12% arrival. I've seen this very wildly, but uh, I think 68% to go 116 miles is plenty, and we probably overcharged slightly. So let's uh, unplug and head out, and off we go to St. Louis. have just plugged in in St. Louis and we're at this really cool Green Street building here. We're kind of in like a back end side of town, a little bit off the highway, but the amenities look cool. It says, welcome to Pet Finder over there. We've pulled in at what state of charge, Alyssa? 13 percent state of charge and we're going to run inside, see if there's restrooms or anything, stuff to do, maybe get a little bit of lunch. It's 2 p.m. I don't really know what's in here, but a whole bunch of I mean, that sign says there's a whole bunch of stuff in here. Huh. But none of them look like restaurants. I don't think it's a food court. <laughs> yeah, maybe not a food court. But it is a beautiful building, kind of weird side of town, but it works. And uh, I guess we're off to Marion next. So 20 minutes or so, up to 220 kilowatts, getting the juice. Let's go do some exploring and see what else we can find. So Alyssa is in uh, half to pee mode, basically, <laughs> starting to do a pee dance. But we're here at uh, this uh, Green Street situation and there's um, there's no way to get in. It says employees only. So we're not 100% sure what we're gonna do here because there doesn't seem to be anywhere else you could pee. So, sorry. Uh, keep walking. We are now charged up to 61%. We only have to go 84 miles. We are gonna go slightly out of our way to Bojangles. Bow time. Or bow time and uh, you know, just, you know, it's something we've been wanting for a while. <laughs> like add to the healthy food on this trip. Hey, Bojangles is health and wellness. That's right. It is mental health and wellness. We love Bojangles. So we're going to Bojangles, which means we overcharge slightly, but it's okay. So let's uh, unplug and go to Bojangles. Very much looking forward to this next stop. <laughs> Off we go to get some good food.
have arrived at the famous Mount Vernon supercharger. We were supposed to be at Bojangles, but it was actually past the supercharger and we're like, ah, we'll just top up here real quick. We already have 23% in the tank, if you will. Like, let's do a quick top up and then we'll go to Bojangles after. That way we're not going out of our way. So the reason this supercharger is so famous, first of all, great restrooms, good restaurant, got everything you need right off the highway. But this is the stretch for when you're coming from North Carolina, at least the way, I forget the next charger that away, but it's like a very long stretch without charging infrastructure. And it's almost like a 100% charge in this car just to make it, and you have to go slow. We are not going that way. We're gonna turn a little bit south, so I don't think we have to do any of the long stretches, but this was the long stretch I was talking about. You always get here and you're like, ah, sign of relief, or you're charging up full to get that way. So um, yeah, let's run inside, do a quick pee, because the rain's picking up and um, make sure we're charging. I mean, do we even need to? It's a Tesla, we haven't even had one tiny charging issue yet. The car is charging, and is it charging fast? It's, yeah, 144 kilowatts at the maximum. You just don't even have to check with this car. You just plug it in and walk away. That is next level luxury. All right, let's go inside. Well, we could spend another 15 minutes here to make it to Kudawa. We just uh, ran back to the car, used the restroom and everything. Alyssa's throwing out some trash. Um, or we could charge here at a 250 kilowatt charger for a quick top up and it looks like it's right off the highway. So yes, Alyssa, I would say we are done. Let's end that trip. Let's say how long do we have enough range to make it here? I think it's very close by only 40 miles. We're at 50%. So yeah, let's unplug here because we're tapering at 50%. We'll get faster charging there. We'll do it out of spec style. We'll get Bojangles on the way and um, that should be great. So yeah, let's uh, unplug and go. Throw out the trash first, though, then we'll unplug. Yeah. Do you need that salsa? Nope, don't need the salsa. Thank you. <laughs> well, I just realized there's another supercharger here in Mount Vernon, and it's a 250 kilowatt charger, so we could have gone there, which would have made more sense than this. But actually, that's about how long it took us to pee anyway. But, you know, whatever, we could have had a little bit more energy and checked out the new charger, which I haven't seen yet. So that's actually good because sometimes this station gets a little bit full. And um, today, this no one seems to be driving this week, which is crazy. So good week it's for Fourth of July weekend coming up too. Yeah, where's everyone not going? That's when we're not going to be traveling back is Fourth of July. Well, actually, Fourth of July is on a Tuesday, so we might be traveling back on Fourth of July, which will be terrible. Fourth of July is this weekend. No, next next, next no, like next Tuesday. This coming Tuesday? Uh huh. No way. Yeah. Are you I checking your calendar? So. Yes, yeah, it is. You're right. I know I'm right. It's a week from yesterday. Yeah. That's when we'll be driving back. Exactly. We'll be driving back. <laughs> Let the games oh begin. Boy. All right. Well, anyway, we are off to Bojangles over this way, and then I think we have to go, you know, we'll probably take this road and intersect back down with 57, right? Is that how we're going down? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It was right on the way. Yeah, you just say it yes, was. even though we're not sure that's the direction we're going. Yeah, it was, because I made sure to choose one that was on the way. But it was also the first one that we could get to. So. Okay, well, what we'll do is we haven't eaten yet in preparation for Bojangles. So let's head east and then south on 57, get some Bojangles. We'll come into this corner pretty hot. Let's just... Oh, wait. Okay. Full Sand Nation. Oh, wait. Model 3 handles freaking awesome, look at this thing, <laughs> <Like>, rip. <laughs> oh my goodness. It's so soft with the sway bar is disconnected. <laughs> okay. Alright. Just uh, shaking up everything for a big meal. That's right, you gotta make sure everything's settled. Mm -hmm.
beyond in the distance there. Now this is where they should put a charging station. Not only is it a loves, and we love loves, it is also, this is the truck entrance, we'll go up to the car entrance, it's also a Bojangles. So it's like two of the best things on the planet in one parking lot with a dog park and plenty of room to put chargers. Mm -hmm. And like this is this is what dreams are made of right here. I guess we can park right up. You just go through the drive through Oh, we go through the drive through sure. Didn't even realize. <laughs> we'll go through the drive through How about that? Well, first things first, we did not get Bojangles. They have Bojangles. Yes, they do. They have some Bojangles. Yeah, they are out of honey mustard, which is the number one dipping sauce for Bojangles. It's a non-starter. And then also, I don't believe they have the same tenders anymore. They said something about a new tender. And um, This requires if, more research. This does require more research because if that's the case, that is extremely upsetting. But, um, <laughs> extremely upsetting. we got Karen over here. No, it is upsetting because why would they change their original recipe? Uh, we got to let it find superchargers to figure out what direction we need to go. Yeah, but you said there's another one 40 minutes down the road, right? Yeah, that's so. Maybe we got to call ahead and see if they got sauce. Yeah. Wasn't there like a huge outage of sauces? Like, I know Chick fil A was getting pretty stingy in their sauces because there was uh, not as much sauce. Oh, really? Yeah. All right. I don't know. But uh, all I know is we're going to book it to the supercharger in Marion, and that might be where the Bojangles actually is. So, full send nation. And use every bit of the road, race car style, all the way on the outside. Stick it over for the inside. <laughs> Full brakes so we don't crash into the car. I'm getting frustrated. I just want to go fast. I don't know if that's... Oh, yeah. Okay, good job. <laughs> Proud of you. All right, let's get this Bojangles down the road. So it's literally like deja vu. I swear we're at a different Bojangles. <laughs> But it's another loves with the Bojangles. And the Bojangles was on the right side last right. time. Right. So that's how we can prove that we're not we're not messing with you guys. But hopefully this one will have honey mustard or else we're on to we're on to the third one. That's right, I'm getting hungry. <laughs> nice easy drive on the way down. Uh, ran with a Mercedes AMG GT for a little bit. Pretty efficient as well, very good. It was only 45 minutes, 45 miles, so 40 minutes. But again, we're gonna grab food, eat at the V3. We're not optimizing the trip, we're just trying to get Bojangles. This is what a happy girl looks like. You got the four. Yeah. One, two. These are not the same tenders anymore. But they said that uh, it's just the Frontier, I don't know how she explained it. Frontier which, menu. Yeah, So, but the East Coast still has the regular menu, per se. So we'll see how good these are. Maybe these will be better than the other ones. I'm going to stay optimistic, but if they're not, you just don't change, don't, don't fix what ain't broken. That's like a southern saying too. Yeah, they're and messing with perfection. Yeah, it is. But that's okay. Here's, this one's yours. They do have honey, they actually only had three honey mustard in the whole store and we got the last three. <laughs> and now this? we're about to go drive on this diverging uh, diamond interchange on the way to the supercharger just over here. So we are now driving UK style. Biscuits. Yeah, why don't you just wait till we get to the <laughs> why don't you just wait till we get to the supercharger? Yes, I get it. Yeah, I get it. Well, I just need to go look at them. I need the visual. You just had to see them. Yeah, I mean they changed their your chicken tenders to the more like what Kane's and what Zaxby's does. Like they're oh, yeah, just show them. They're different tenders. They're usually just oh, like Oh what the heck? Yeah, they're get out of here. That's what I'm saying. That's BS. Gosh. Next up, we got to start making videos on rate Bojangles. Your, rate your tendies. Rate your tenders. We got to force some change in this industry next. Yeah, <laughs> is, but, but I don't know. Maybe in Florida they're different. I don't know. I don't know. That's pretty wild. Anyway, here's the supercharger. So let's get plugged in. Wow, we have like seen maybe a handful of other Teslas on this trip. Yeah, because we really, I mean, the last time we've really road trip like this far out of the way versus just going to Vegas um, yeah wasn't it, it was pretty full most yeah of the we time. normally see a lot of cars so I but wonder, I guess a lot I mean, of people are it's been three years so I wonder if just a lot of people have bought 
CCS cars, but... The, uh, the numbers, no, there's a lot more Teslas on yeah, the road. the numbers still show the Teslas. I think there's just cars. all of these are new locations that are just sort of future capacity built out in the middle of the country. It's Something pretty amazing. Some companies just don't do Anyway, 26%. Let's see, Alyssa, do you think it's gonna plug and work on the first try? Yeah, of course. All right, let's try it. Let's try you can it. just leave. Yeah, all right, let's try I'm gonna plug in. Oh, look, another one of these stickers. I always keep choosing the ones that have the stickers on them. None of these, oh no, that one over there has a sticker. Little wall outlet. I don't know why that's the case. All right, in we go. And of course, we're charging, ramping just that easy it says it only we only need eight minutes here i think we're gonna probably spend more than eight minutes eating so and there we are well you know 240 kilowatts right off the bat 251 you just can't make this stuff up it's so good so we'll put a little youtube on enjoy some uh bojangles fries are, 10 10. fries are always the best which sometimes they're a hit or miss though yeah that's true that's mm -hmm. true all right we'll see y'all in i don't know 15 20 minutes we are now at 80% state of charge. We'll easily make it to Kadoa. And I looked to see if we should go past Kadoa, but there's quite a bit of distance down to uh, Nashville. There are some chargers northwest, but um, yeah, we're gonna need a lot of juice there to make the stretch. So Alyssa just unplugged us here. That was perfect charging stop. You're gonna take on some driving while I do some emails. Do you know where my laptop is? All right, let's grab that and then we'll rock and roll. just arrived here in Kudawa, Kentucky, and uh, it's actually a pretty full charging station. We are going to have to share with these guys over here, um, but hopefully there'll still be some decent speeds, and uh, we'll see. I think so. Let's see what we get up to. That was a pretty long handshake, actually. But here we go, ramping up. We're at a pretty high state of charge. Oh, is this, this is the gap that it's, well, it's 108 miles to the next one. But yeah, we wouldn't have made it there. So that is our next stop is in Nashville, which is always 
a fun, interesting stop. Ooh. And here we go. Not, uh, not good speeds at all. Unless this is going to spoof me. I believe. Let's end this trip. Shows that three solids are available, 150 kilowatt max. So we are literally splitting 50-50 with this guy. Well, I was just on a phone call arranging some electric jet ski test drives, which is way more important than filming superchargers. So hopefully Alyssa has sorted that out. The guy plugged into 1A had just left. And so that means we should be getting full power on 1B, all 150 kilowatts. The old V2 superchargers are screaming. That's what they do in hot weather. They exhaust hot air. Version three is a whole next level system. No ambient air transfer or anything like that. Um, interestingly, I chose, I told Alyssa to plug into this spot when we plugged in because I noticed when we were coming off the highway, I saw two guys plug in down there and I knew that we would have to share power longer, especially if they just arrived. This model three was already here when we got here. And also they took the pull-in trailer spot. So I was like, ah, let's make this dude share power with us because you should always use this one last. And um, yeah, let's take a look as to what's going on here. So we're watching things. We can't put this on YouTube. All right, we're at 56%. Sorry to block your video, but we need to, need to show the viewers what's going on. So we are here in Kudawa and we are going to Webster. We've been to this charger how many times? Zero. Oh, you've never been here? Yes, you have, for sure. Yeah. I've been here a bunch. Yeah. All right, so it wants us to skip over Nashville. The nice thing is there's a lot of elevation loss going into Nashville. Um, but there's also plenty of chargers in between. So it wants us to sit here for another 35 minutes at 113 kilowatts when we're going to go right by a 24 stall, 250 kilowatt charger. Are you kidding me, Tesla? What? So let's end that trip. Let's set our sights on this charger right here. And there we go. We can make it roughly now. We'll give it another couple minutes and then we'll hit the road, head to the other side of Nashville. We should miss all the traffic by the time we get there or at least catch the tail end of it. Mm -hmm. And then we're off to Atlanta. Hot Atlanta. That's right. We are charged up now to 60% state of charge. Alyssa's heading out just to unplug the car. And there we go. We are unplugged and we are ready to go. 100 and something miles to Nashville. 108. We'll be there at 8 p.m. Then we'll hammer down from there. Alyssa's taking on this leg. And then I'll probably take on the one after. Thanks for driving. Woot woot. Woot yeah. woot. Oh, we got these guys pulling out. Off we go. Ah, uh, phone key sucks. I wish there was a way they could tie it not to Bluetooth. I don't know, but it's really... It's not as great as you would think. Yeah. Off we go then.
Welcome to Nashville. We have arrived and let's take a look at the trip stats. Alyssa, you can get us juicing up while we do this. 108 miles, 300 watt hour per mile, pretty good. We're down to 11% state of charge. Again, plenty left in the tank. It is funny how our Model 3 performance from 2019 has really turned into a Model 3 standard range from today in terms of road trip ability. So, um, Yep, we'll juice up here. Really nice supercharger here on the south side. Is this Brentwood? What is, which one is this? I guess it's technically Nashville. Brentwood's over a little bit west, if I remember correctly. Uh, is there no service here to load maps? What? Here we go. Yeah, this one over here somewhere. But the maps are not loading. Uh, we've had such bad cell service this entire drive. Here we go. Okay, yeah, here's Brentwood. That one's also new. Yeah, there used to just be like one supercharger in Nashville. Maybe it was that one. But I remember when this went in, and I think I remember when this one went in. But anyway, we're gonna continue southeast down through here. All of these version three chargers over to Chattanooga. I don't know if we're gonna go to Chattanooga or not. I love Chattanooga. Chattanooga is one of my favorite places. But um, yeah pull through spots for towing which is great so we'd love to see that um i don't know what's going on here but look at that you can pull right in pull through it's freaking awesome version three chargers everywhere and uh just working out great perfect weather for a drive you can see we are coming off of peak charging speeds now and let's take a look it's been a few charging stops since we've gone into service mode hasn't it so let's do this do 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 enable let's take a look at our stats it's 90 degrees outside toasty but it feels nice with the sun down warm day for sure let's go over here to high voltage charging yeah 62 packs just toasty but uh, still doing well over 500 amps absolutely ripping it so love to see this we're enjoying the drive enjoying the day we will be off. Let's take a look at our next supercharger on the way to Webster. Figure out maybe where we're going to stay the night, something like that. If we do a deep charge here, maybe we just find a hotel, something like that. We don't need to be to Florida until tomorrow for dinner time in Tampa. So we still need to calculate how far we need to push it today. But looks like um, going through Chattanooga down to Atlanta. So maybe we stay in between Chattanooga and Atlanta. What time? Atlanta, midnight, and probably a little bit too late to run through. But we'll see. We'll see how we're feeling, how we want to push it or not. We are charging up here in southeast Nashville. And the next stop that the car wants us to go to is this Kimball, Tennessee, 12 stall location. But you can see the pack's really hot, so our charging is getting lower. Um, and, and I've sort of done some calculations. We could do you know, deeper charges and then let the pack cool longer while cruising nicely, or we can just smash it down low over and over, and that's the best way to do it. So what I think we're gonna do is not go to this one because it's 150 kilowatts in Manchester, but this one in Kimball, Oh wait, is that where it wants to go? That's where it wants to go is Kimball. Kimball. There's one a little bit earlier that seems to be right off the highway. Look at all these stalls they have there. 12 stall, literally right on the exit. So I'm thinking we, you know, it's 99 miles. It says negative 1%. There's no way, well, I don't know. We'll play it by ear. My thinking is we'll unplug here when we have a pretty low arrival, maybe let's just say 5%, if for whatever reason we can't make it, we have a bailout option. Well, two of them, but this would be the ideal bailout option being a, uh, you know, version three. And then there's just so many superchargers through Chattanooga down this way. Welcome to the Georgia area. Just, you know, anything around Atlanta, look how many superchargers they have around here, just crazy. And then, of course, we'll head south from there. It's like, how does the car choose which one to do? It's like every exit has Tesla superchargers at it. It's just crazy. Isn't that wild, Alyssa? Yeah, uh, just, uh, just it's great. Yeah, I wish we were heading this way. To go where? Would you want to go over there? Tail the dragon. No way. Yeah, this is, they need some superchargers in here. Yeah, there's absolutely nothing on there. No. Anyway, all right, good stuff. Let's get ready to get out of here pretty soon. Yeah, 1% arrival. We'll charge up to like 53, 52%, something like that. And then we're off. 
Okay, we're charged up to 54%. Let's go. I think the delirium is kicking in from the long road trips. We just went on one, we just came back from one, and we're going across country now. This is a very lively city of Kimball, Tennessee. Yeah, we're just outside of Chattanooga. We just booked a hotel, the Holiday Inn and Suites. In no suites? Express in this one. Usually the Expresses are the best. Um, this is the Holiday Inn and Suites from IHG in Chattanooga. And um, yeah, we called ahead. They have two or three car chargers and they said they were available and they're working so we're just gonna top up a tiny bit here and probably uh, just head straight there and risk it risk it so we're just gonna do like a little three second top up yeah because there's plenty of chargers around there yeah lots of lots of level two stations all around Chattanooga um, this is where having a CCS adapter in the car would actually be useful because there's some DC fast chargers in the city that this car can't actually CCS charge because it needs the charge for ECU swap and so um, we're also doing this video exclusively using Tesla superchargers. Looks like we got a truck show over here. Hell yeah, brother. Love trucks. That is true. I really do love trucks. Um, when people like roll coal by a supercharger, I'm like, that's freaking awesome. And the chargers are right over there. <laughs> and there's a oh, boat. There's a, guy, a guy in a Model S towing a boat. How sick is that? We just lost all Starbursts. Oh no, Starbursts everywhere. <laughs> That's awesome. So is this a version three? Yes, so we can just plug in anywhere. So let's do just that. Hey, Boom. it's at a Walmart. Oh, wow, wow. First time a supercharger's ever at a Walmart and the wipers are going for no reason again because we have bugs on the windshield. Oh no, insert comet here. Wow, that is like the most not well set up trailer I've ever seen. The things just... Yeah, that's terrible. What are they thinking? <laughs> that's sketchy. We have plugged in two minutes ago at 6% state of charge. We're already at 16%, ripping at 254 kilowatts right here, over 1,000 miles an hour. I hate it when people use miles per hour because it's different for every version of the car. Like a Model X getting 254 kilowatts would be like 800 miles per hour, which is why this is not a comparable term. Anyway, in the amount of time it took me to complain about this, we're ready to go and we'll make it to the hotel at 6%. So, are we ready, Alyssa? Ready. That's all we needed. Three minute charging, let's go. Still in awe with this boat. Welcome to beautiful downtown Chattanooga. We are staying at a hotel just over here. We are at 3% state of charge. The big question is, was the lady telling the truth when she said the chargers were available? There's our hotel, Holiday Inn and Suites. Um, I need to find the parking, which I think it looks like it's right here. Valet parking. What about just normal sea valet attendant? Um, do not enter valet parking only, guest registration parking, 
this away. Okay, great. Wow, that guy just totally cut us in line because we didn't know where we were going. Mm -hmm. um, Respect. Yeah, that was a good move. Okay, so we're heading down this way. Let's go. Oh, look, chargers are available and open. Now we are talking. So we'll just go right over Somebody here. said the Clipper Creek ones were actually faster than the but Tesla. But the Clipper Creek is dead right there. Oh, well then. And I think that was actually for a different hotel. Oh. Yeah, so this one should be good. We'll just pull Perfect. it a little bit all the way here so my door can clear. <laughs> ha! Perfection! So let's, uh, 3%, let's check the charge speed. Let me plug it in real quick. And uh, we will see how this goes. Blah, blah, blah. Recommend charging now. Let's see. 48 amps. This thing's going to rip. Look at that. It'll be done in the morning at 100%. Woohoo! Eight hour charge. Perfect. So, what we'll do is, like we did last night, we'll charge it to 90 so it doesn't sit full. And then we'll just bump it when we wake up. Are we waking up pretty early? Oh, yeah, we are. So, I would just keep it to full. No. Because you're not going to bump it in the morning? Yeah, I'll bump it as soon as I wake up. Sorry. Yeah. Looks like someone did a fat burnout here. <laughs> That's awesome. I would totally be that idiot to do something like that. A uh, beautiful double tree by Hilton across the street, that water fountain, the U-Haul really adding to the appeal. And they have charging too. Yeah, and the hotel to the right has charging. I saw a couple Teslas charging over there. So everyone is charging. It's great. And a good morning to you, Alyssa. Yeah, good morning to you. Good morning. So um, there's a Starbucks across the street. I think we'll load some stuff in the car. Go get some Starbucks. Uh, do you want to just do it now? Let's just walk across. It's right across the street. It's like a, just a normal small road. I'm not understanding why there's no cars around. Yeah, this trunk is uh, the struts are not doing so hot, but. Um, well, no, uh, so our friend Brian from I1 Tesla put these little springs on to help pop it open, but I don't think that has anything to do with it, but our struts have lost the pressure, so the trunk doesn't auto open, uh, or I should say pop open. Anyway, we charged up to 90% last night. When we woke up this morning, I bumped it to 100. It just completed at 100%, and then when we were leaving the room, I preconditioned the car. So really maximizing all the energy here. We dumped in 67 kilowatt hours from three to 100%. And so um, that's actually added to the battery pack according to the meter on the car. So maybe degradation uh, isn't so really that bad. Uh, we really, you know, there's a couple kilowatt hours below zero that we can go as well. So yeah, it's really not bad. I think I'm just used to big giant batteries driving the Rivian and the Lucid around. This is way tinier than those. And um, even though it is the large battery at the time, um, it's relatively late, but we're also fairly close to Tampa. We're gonna see my mom and my sister for dinner in Tampa tonight. So we, uh, yeah, kind of slept in a little bit, just a very relaxed trip on the way out here, keeping it Tesla style, just. You say sleep in, but like technically our time, this is like almost six o'clock in the morning. Yeah, six o'clock in the morning mountain time, yes. But we also went to bed, yeah, I guess at midnight, I don't know. Um, but yeah, I mean, just a very lax trip, keeping it Tesla style, got free charging and free parking last night, even though I think they were supposed to charge us, but they didn't. And so, yeah, let's go over, get some Starbucks, get this day started and hit the road. Yeah, nice hotel. Nice. Yeah, Double Tree by Hilton. Better than the Holiday Inn, apparently. Damn, I guess I got to get off this Holiday Inn kick. I love these things. But uh, yeah, they didn't have any refreshers. There's definitely more dogs. <sighs> Look at this doggo. <laughs> it's a low rider, yes. Um, great. Well, not sure where you're going. A list of the cars this way. Um, yeah, no refresher, so we'll find something along the way and we'll hit the road. All right. Well, it's time to go. So we'll unplug this. We will wrap it around nicely. Sometimes the wrap doesn't make it so it's easy to get into the little slot here, but that's okay as long as it's face down inside whoa music 100 percent 282 miles this time um let's see are you on a phone call is what this is saying yeah who who were you calling i just called somebody for seven minutes really 
<laughs> oh my goodness. It's a random number too. <laughs> it's some Colorado number, right? Yeah. Yeah, 970. Okay. Anyway, we are going from here to Tampa, Florida. Only 500 miles. It's 8.43 a.m. We got to get through Atlanta traffic. And so, yeah, it looks like we can make it to the other side of Atlanta. That's great. And we'll try and stretch it to the farthest away supercharger that we can. We'll look at that in real time. And we'll be there at 6 p.m. Perfect in time for dinner. How about I that? I thought it was going to be a lot later, to be honest. Yeah, that's great. So I had the car preconditioning. Let's just bump it up a little bit. Turn the fan down. In the reverse, Terry. And uh, Oh, yeah, there's Nelly. All right, let's go. Guys, we are just pulling off the, uh, excuse me, I got the hiccups. <laughs> the oh my goodness, I got the hiccups. We're pulling off the highway mm -hmm. and um, we are at 7% 7 7 state of charge. We had one hell of a drive in this. It was awesome. <laughs> that was going out the beginning of the clip. Oh my gosh, oh, this is not going well. We left Chattanooga, if you look here on the map, and we drove all the way past Atlanta and we're already here past Macon on one charge. It seemed like the weather conditions, the speeds, a little bit of traffic helped with range and we were able to do 215 miles. We're at, you know, 214 right now with another half a mile to go. To roughly 215 miles from 100% to seven, which is great for this car, but it's warm out 93 degrees. Again, we were in consistent traffic, but the speeds were high. And look at where this charger is. It's Aboshies. At, it's at the Dave Connor Special. Aboshies. Abuckies. Abuckies. <laughs> it's, yeah, this is the Dave Connor Special. My mom and dad love Buckies. He literally, he'll call us every single time he gets to go to one. And then he asks us if we want jerky from it. You, know, you want us to send you some jerky from Buckies? <laughs> no. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, yeah. So anyway, look at how huge this is. The gas pumps just keep going and going and going. You have not lived in America. You've not experienced America unless you've been to Bucky's. But you haven't been to Georgia unless you've got some roadside peaches. So we're definitely going to stop here. It's 1 p.m. That was a long, many hour drive. Get some lunch, probably do a deep charge, do some exploring. It takes some time just to get through Bucky's. <laughs> we're definitely doing well on timing. Let's go find the uh, charger. This is, they have, they have 87 gas pumps or more. They have a hundred gas pumps. There's the Tesla supercharger. There's 11 available right now out of 16. Ooh, one is unavailable. Tesla supercharger, unre unreliable. 1A, that one is unreliable. 
but uh, we'll park down here. That is a good looking Model 3 right there. That thing looks hot. And, uh, Except for the wrap. No, I like, I like it. You like the hood wrap? Yeah. Oh. All right, let's get plugged in and we're gonna do some exploring. And here we go at the Bucky's plugging in. We're actually getting a Bucky supercharger by our house in Colorado. And dang, this is just a massive roadside establishment. I gotta send my dad a text. He'll love that we're here. Let's make sure we're gonna get some juice. It'll start out at around 90 kilowatts. There we go. And it'll take some time and ramp all the way up. So great. We'll do a deep charge, deep, deep charge here, but there we go. Pulled 61 kilowatt hours out of it. That was awesome really good and I'm wondering over here there's a Model S plaid on this trailer right here do you think they didn't make it quite to the charging station so wonder what's up with that right in front of the superchargers never something you really want to see is it wow just so busy here Get on the board. That you don't like that? I, I don't do good with a lot of crowds and people not knowing where the heck they're going 24 7. And that was exactly what that was. <laughs> that was crazy. Actually, we're going to go straight because if you look over here, oh, it looks like that Model S didn't run out of charge. They're pulling out of here. He just came and stopped and trolled some Tesla owners <laughs> transporting that car. Um, there are Rivian Amazon vans over here. We always got to check those out. We have a full review on out of spec reviews where Max went to go look at one and went on a nice tour. So uh, yeah, let's go check these things out over here. Looking cool. See that front charge port on the one in this side, but not on that side. Oh no, they both had the front charge port. Yeah. What do you think of these things, Alyssa? I think they're cute. Yeah, they're definitely improved the looks of a neighborhood as they go by. It's pretty amazing. They got two of them on the back of that 4,500 things look so freaking cool that's the truck and trailer Alyssa really wants right there yeah, yeah. <laughs> I love those things she loves them side by sides are her jam all right we're still charging up no one's here at the Tesla chargers pretty empty again well that was one hell of an experience and the fans are ripping on this I kept climbing on because I knew we were gonna be a little while I didn't want the car getting heat soaked so yeah, we're already at 67%. That's pretty crazy. Um, I'm actually going to eat a sandwich now. I was wondering why the seat went to a crazy position. Let's go to Kyle's profile. Uh, nice and cool in here. Best part of a Tesla is it just stays cool when you leave it. So Ooh, It's toasty out there. I'm not, yeah. not used to this heat anymore. Yeah, 93 degrees and it's just, uh, you know, just starting. Yeah. This weekend's gonna be real toasty around here, but let's, we'll relax. We'll get a road trip video up on this channel that our viewers are watching now. Mm -hmm. And uh, we'll do another deep charge here, just cycling the battery. It's not the best thing for it, but uh, it's what works for our trip. We gotta eat some food. Gotta eat. Well, a super long charging stop, but um, that's about how long it took for us to run inside. That was a lot of people in there. So a lot of people, it. a lot of yelling. We spoke to a lot of viewers as well, met quite a few people who watch our videos, which was great. And now we are off to Tampa for dinner. And I think my mom is actually driving up north in the Model Y about now from Marco Island. So wants us to go to Jasper, Florida. Looks like there's gonna be some crazy traffic. Yeah, the Tesla's even routing us around it already, which is great. So Jasper, but we might be able to stretch it to Lake City um, because look, it says we're going to get to Jasper at uh, 20%. I think we could easily make Lace, Lake City or one of these down here. So what we'll do again is we'll unplug now and we'll just stretch it to the farthest one away that we can. 20% is way too soon to plug in if we can still stretch it, but I'm not going to sit here at 31 kilowatts um, charging up. We put in almost 60 kilowatt hours, so we are just cycling this battery pack. Alyssa, do, is there anything we need to do before we unplug? No. Then let's go.
we're here at the Supercharger in Jasper, Florida. It was conveniently just straight across of the exit here. Yeah, which that's was nice. Very, as close nice. to the highway as you can get. I know, seriously. So we're gonna plug in here. Got some trash, so excuse the noise. Easy as one, two, three. Go, throw these away. Nice having trash cans at the stops. It's very convenient. Let's see what kind of speeds we're pulling. Yeah, it's just calibrating at 91, and then you know, after a couple seconds, it'll ramp up. There we go. 140. Oh, that's a big 180. Jump. Whoa, that's a bigger jump. 218. Oh my god. 219. Let's go. <laughs> All right, that's pretty good. Uh, 221, it's still going. It's still going. Well, what's our next stop here? So, we pushed it. This We wanted to go one farther down the road, actually. Uh, but Lake City is a terrible supercharger, version 2, that's always super busy. So, I wanted to avoid Lake City. And then we thought, okay, well, let's try and stretch it all the way over here to Alu Alachua. How do you say that? I think that's pretty good. Al Alachua, uh, Florida. And uh, we would not have made it unless we went slow. There we are, 250 kilowatts. But um, yeah, so we're gonna go from here. We'll skip it to Ocala. And then from there, we'll be down into Tampa. So we'll charge up just about until we seriously taper. And then we'll actually, there's so many superchargers to choose from at that point we'll make our own determination because there's we pass a bunch in the tampa area so you know florida's just got superchargers just everywhere it's crazy so all good here oh man got what'd you get there boiled peanuts oh <laughs> boiled peanuts those are nasty anyway um <laughs> we are really thermal limiting here it's you know 100 degrees outside we're down to 88 kilowatts at 47 percent so the best thing we can do is go and let this pack cool off and then we just need a quick little zap to get back going. It says we'll make it to Ocala at, um, let's see, 4%, but I wonder if we can just not go to that charging station because it's a 150 kilowatt. Let's see what else is in the area. See, we would rather go to this one because it's a 250 kilowatt station. So let's take a look here. You have enough energy to go 101 miles, 14% on that one. Let's see if we can go farther then. So that's Ocala, Ocala. We're going here to Tampa, right? Brooksville, that seems like where we want to go. Boom. Negative 2%. Okay, so we'll charge up just a bit more to make it there. Look at that though, 84 kilowatts. And then we're just going to go nice and gently, let everything cool down. We really need to get this car fixed. <laughs> yeah, is that going to be expensive because we're out of warranty? I don't actually know how much they're going to charge us. You make it sound like it's just a, a plug. That's a valve, yeah. Yeah, just a fix. Let's hope. You could do it right now. Yeah, maybe. Get out there, Sparky. Yeah, well, it's 150 miles there. Actually, that seems pretty far away for this car because if we just look at our usage on the drive over, we would get 111 if we left at 50 percent yeah because we get about 220 ish miles on a full charge so i think that's actually probably not a good plan i think we should just rip it over here to yeah it's the ocala 250 kilowatt situation which is this one right here because that's the one it wanted to go to anyway so yeah let's rock and roll we'll unplug now We'll head uh, 106 miles at 51%, totally doable. Charging stopped. Battery packs definitely in the red. Actually, let me just try something really quick. One thing I haven't taken a look at yet, if you turn the car on. Yeah, don't put it in gear though. I wanna see what track mode shows for our battery temperature. Yeah, like a dark green and the motor's red just because of, I guess, preconditioning and waste heat. But yeah, things are toasty in the car. <laughs> okay, then we'll come here. We'll take out track mode. You can turn the car and throw it back in the drive and we're good to go. Thanks for the water. Let's rock and roll.
Welcome to Ocala, Florida. We are pulling in at 5% state of charge. We timed that perfectly, held the speed right where you needed to to get here pretty low. Oh, didn't really monitor it at all. Yeah, just kind of cruised along. Just kind of drove traffic. <laughs> nice. And the supercharger should be just up here on the right, perhaps near this car wash or probably at the Wawa's. Nice. And this could potentially be our last supercharging stop of the trip. So uh, you just missed the entrance there, according to Tesla. It's according to Alyssa. And now we're going according to Alyssa, yes. Where is the supercharger? The there it is. Very nice. So we'll back in, plug in, get this thing juicing, and get just enough juice to make it to Tampa because we got to get to dinner. 101 degrees outside. It's freaking hot out there. It's toasty. It's yeah, it is. I already missed Colorado weather. Yeah, Colorado weather is nice because it's dry. And you can find shade and it's literally, you're cool. Yeah. Versus here you find shade, you're still dying. Yep, absolutely. All right, well, let's get this thing juicing. We're at 4% now and we'll see how much we need just for a little bit of buffer, drive around Tampa, all that good stuff. My mom brought up her Model Y, so I imagine we'll cruise around in that. Maybe we'll just leave this at a level two somewhere. We are plugged in and we're just starting the ramp up. It always, again, does that low power. It's a high usage supercharging station, which sets our limit to 80%, but we can always override that if we need to. I just had put it on max cooling for a second. Let's take a look at our battery temperatures on initial plug-in, 50 to 55 C. The Tesla keeps this thing red hot and we'll give it a couple minutes. It'll ramp right up to 250 kilowatts. We'll smoke the battery temperature and then it'll derate due to, due to overheating. You join us pumping 660 amps at 101 degrees Fahrenheit outside. Battery pack temp is definitely warming up. We are in Ocala, Florida. There are two, see, this is a, a rental Model 3 because it's got the little sticker in the charge port. Uh, there are two superchargers here in Ocala. There's a version two and a version three. We are stopping at the version three. All is great. The whole trip was flawless. This is our last supercharging stop on the way out to Florida. Just amazing how we literally did not have even a slight niggle, not a slight problem. We never had to unplug and move the car, not once. Every single time we got to a supercharger, we plugged in, we got full speed right away, zero hassle, zero issue, and I mean zero, literally not even a tiny something this entire trip. Every time we plugged in, it was plug, a couple seconds later, full speed. Tesla is absolutely nailing it on the charging infrastructure. It's why all the automakers are adding the NAX port. It's so that their customers can use this network. It's not so <laughs> we have a better port. Yes, it is a better port and nicer to interface with, but it's purely to gain access to superchargers. And Alyssa, what was your impression of the trip? So freaking easy, man. Yeah, I just, yeah. So easy. Easy, benchmark, everybody else should be like this. Well, they are. Yeah, it's great. And now you don't have to drive a Tesla to use the Tesla supercharger network, which is nice. You could use your e-tron on the network if they offer a public adapter. What? Yeah, if they offer a public adapter, you'll be able to... No, if they offer a public adapter, you can plug any car into the supercharger. If they have announced that No, but they will. Yeah, very cool. Well, that's the end of the trip. Thumbs up. All good. Pretty amazing. And you can see we have absolutely smoked the battery. <laughs> we were down to 35 kilowatts there because we're at 64C and it's kind of wobbling around here. So this is all the car just freaking out due to over temperature. And uh, a normal Tesla wouldn't have any of these problems, but ours has had the crap kicked out of it. Certainly you start noticing it later in the day when it's hot outside these over temperature issues, but uh, hey, it's recovered okay up to 180 kilowatts. I'll take that. Well, we are charging up just sitting at about 110 kilowatts. It's leveled out at, which is perfectly reasonable considering what this battery pack is going through without this coolant valve. I really need to get that fixed, but just wanted to take a second as it's our last supercharging stop of the road trip and just reflect on the trip and, you know, talk about what we set out to experience. And what we wanted to experience was 
what is the supercharger network providing in terms of a EV driver charging experience for a road trip. Again, as we talked about in the beginning of this video, 99% of the time you're gonna be charging on level two at home or at your office, and you're not really gonna be relying on DC fast charging infrastructure. However, for those few times a year where you do take a road trip, that's what actually makes a buying decision of possible for a car. You shouldn't buy a car that's impossible to road trip. And I think uh, automakers really started to notice people value the charging experience as being very high on the list. This lady's got a big dog in the back of her Model Y. Um, and so Tesla has provided the best charging experience. This was one of the best EV road trips I've taken in recent memory. I We literally had not one issue. I can say that confidently, right Alyssa? Yes, no, not, no Not even a niggle. I think there was one stall that was down the whole trip. But we didn't even use that one. It was right. 1A at the two superchargers ago. Right, but I was just like in general, usually when we're on CCS road trips, there's right. multiple stalls at at Each one station, station. <laughs> yes. that's down, but over the whole, what is it, 1,500, how many miles yeah, is that? Yeah, 1,500 well, miles? Well, we're not there yet, but uh, yeah, probably, uh, yeah. let's see, what are we, since charge, I don't know, I'm in service mode right now, so it's a little bit. Well, I think it's around. You can take a look here. Uh, 1,841 miles. Yeah. It's, it's 2,000 miles in total. Yeah, and just one, only one. Was, one stall out of the whole thing we saw was, was down. Was down, and we didn't even check to see if it was officially down. Right, it may have still worked, we yeah. don't know. <laughs> so just really crazy experience here, being able to plug in confidently, get full speed confident, confidently. Again, the car might be slightly overheating, but the network is providing the car all the juice it wants. And I'm really looking forward to taking my Model S on a road trip to California next month, uh, utilizing the supercharger network more. Uh, I noticed the superchargers are definitely busier in California than they are pretty much everywhere else. We didn't really see any cars this trip until we got to the southeast and now that we're in Florida we're starting to see quite a few again but it just shows that if you need to go long distance you have to use the supercharger network it works it's amazing there are some still still some niggles about higher voltage cars charging on v3 I imagine they'll reconfigure version 3 to support a thousand volts so everyone will be able to switch and it should just be a non-issue uh, payment processing and handshakes will have to get sorted uh, for each new model of car that comes out, it's no different than anything else. It might lead to a few little hiccups here or there. Um, but I think once you get you know that model of car charging fine on the supercharger, the engineers can work on this, then, uh, then it'll just charge everywhere. That's the nice thing. As long as you can get through the handshake process, it will work on every single supercharger. We cannot say that about anyone else because there's so many different brands of chargers and different hardware issues and different derating happening out there and the supercharger network isn't the bottleneck for this car at least. So all good here and uh, just, just a wonderful supercharging experience. It's not the end of the trip, but I just wanted to point out truly how next level this road trip has been. It's just so like, it's just so, my mind's blank when thinking of describing it. It's just so easy. There is no issue. Yeah, it's like, why, why do we even have to talk about charging? That's why Tesla owners are like, why, why do you talk about charging so much? It's like, not a thing. <laughs> it's not a problem. <laughs> I'm like, yeah, it's not for you. <laughs> it is for everyone else. And it's why so many people buy Teslas. It'll be interesting to see how many people buy Teslas once everyone's able to use the supercharger network. I still think the demand will still be pretty high. I mean, even you benchmark the base Model 3 on most like most cars. Like it did, yeah, most cars like car. tech-wise just don't even match up to to any of that. So and there, there's definitely still the market for it. I don't think there'll be any of that drain. Totally agree. Uh, great, well, let's, let's continue. We're pretty much ready to go. Only a few minutes into our charging session. We've been here 13 minutes charging. It's all we needed to get into Tampa, so uh, Let's head there. We'll figure out how to charge it once we're there. We'll go see my mom and my sister. And um, then end the video. And that'll be the end of the video. We have arrived to Salt Shack on the Bay. Apparently this is a place my sister likes to go to. And um, they said they're at the bar, my mom and sister, which is great. So we gotta find them somewhere. And I don't really know where to park. We'll just go around and follow these guys. Maybe they're leaving and uh, then we'll park. Yeah. Um, what a trip though. Super easy. You know, I think there was a couple things. First off on the car side, the suspension is amazing. This mountain pass suspension, the way we have it dialed in for full comfort rocks. 
the not down, sponsored by the way oh not sponsored no i paid for all that uh but i love it um the next point is the uh coolant situation on the car this little valve means we were overheating the battery and i could tell at the beginning of the days it was better and as we kept going it got hotter and hotter and started to derate quicker and quicker and you know that was a little bit uh annoying but uh, that's really didn't seem to impact us that much. I mean, most of our supercharging sessions were just us doing things anyway. It's not like we were cannonballing. We're on a typical normal road trip. That worked really well. And and really the main point of taking this car on this trip, we can choose right or left, Lisa, your pick. Right, okay. Uh, the reason we took this car on this trip was to uh, test the supercharger network. And it was uh, truly flawless, really amazing. I mean, genuinely flawless, not one little issue. And so I wanna leave you on the thought that's like, try and do that same trip with a CCS car today, this week, this month, uh, and, and plug in and get the full vehicle speed every single time. It's not possible. It's just, I've done it so much. It's not possible. You always run into, you could get a CCS car here. I have no issues getting one here. But the infrastructure that supports uh, everything that's non-Tesla is crap, truly. Uh, you get derated charging sessions. You have uh, you know, tons of different problems that relate to um, getting cars to charge properly. I mean, I've done countless videos on this. So to be able to take a Tesla and not think about it and now have the data to back up not thinking about it, which we've done you know, thousands and thousands of miles, hundreds of thousands of miles road tripping Teslas. And to show you in this video, our true experience of road tripping this car, which is pull up to any supercharger, plug it in and it works. That doesn't even get into route planning, the way plug and charge works with Tesla. This is just the network up, operational and not derated. That's next level. The next topics come down to other cars probably won't be as seamless as this one. I totally admit that. There's gonna be probably some interoperability issues as new cars launch. That will get sorted, I hope, and then the cars will work perfectly. But will the route planning integrate with Tesla's route planning perfectly to get you know, sort of the swarm data to manage out busy superchargers? I don't know, we'll have to see. I imagine you know, keeping it all in-house has been Tesla's major advantage as they open it up to Ford, GM, Volvo, Polestar today, et cetera, uh, Rivian. Will those vehicles be able to integrate as nicely as this car does in the supercharger network? My guess is no. But it's not like they're gonna integrate any worse than they do on the CCS network. Yeah, it's better than what we have now. <laughs> it's way better. So anyway, I just wanted to leave you on that. We literally drove, let's take a look at the trip stats right here at the end of the trip. We did 1,949 miles, 323 watt hour per mile, um, I can actually pull up quite a bit of the charging data here. We, it was all completely free charging because thankfully uh, you guys used our referral code like we mentioned. So that was awesome. I'm just gonna go account, charging, history. Let's just take a look at all the stops that we did along the way, all zero dollars. So this was our first stop was in Lyman, Colorado. So Lyman, Colorado, there we go. Credits used 140 miles, 165, so we did. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen different supercharging stops where we're asking, you know, cars getting 250 kilowatts or 150 kilowatts in the case of V2s. And each time the car got exactly what it wanted on the first try without question, without fail. We didn't have to move once. Uh, only one only one stall was ever down and um, that was it. Yeah, so love Tesla, hate Tesla. That's our experience. It was amazing. Truly next level. So, uh, and it's been this way since like 2013 when the supercharger network started getting built out, 2014. Yeah, yeah so like nothing new for Tesla owners. They just wasted an hour, however long this video is. Great. Learning what they already know. Thanks for watching. Thanks for watching. But if you work at an automaker, do our same road trip. Seriously, repeat it. I challenge you and try and match this experience. It's not possible in anything but a Tesla or a gas car. And even then we've been having issues with gas car payments. Yeah, I actually <laughs> rolled up to one and uh, the whole station was down, so that's Yeah, fun. that's right. And then I got to one the next day and the credit card readers were down. <laughs> ah, crazy. Let's go have a beer. See you on another one soon. Bye-bye.